As the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 gets pushed slowly further away by the developers, if you're like me, you're craving an escape to a neon-drenched dark future world to get your silver hands on. In addition to their game, the developer CD Projekt Red have also confirmed that there will be an anime release by Netflix based on their fictional world of Night City called Cyberpunk Edge Runners. But we have even longer to wait for that as it's coming in 2022. So let's talk about a few movies and TV shows you can immerse yourself into now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Rogers. The cyberpunk aesthetic can be traced back to the 60s and 70s, with sci-fi authors being encouraged by their publishers to explore the ideas of high-tech worlds with low qualities of life. This led to some amazing inspiration that is still relevant today, in art, video games and movies, including what is arguably the original cyberpunk movie, Blade Runner, and its many different cuts. There were multiple edits of this classic movie, including what they call the work print, the US theatrical cut, the international cut, the director's cut and the final cut, just to name a few. The main difference being the amount of voiceover there is from Harrison Ford to hold the viewer's hand through the story rather than leave it ambiguous, which I'm not a big fan of. Of, but Ridley Scott's final cut was well done. The success of Blade Runner obviously put a lot of pressure on the sequel 2049, but I loved that movie in the world that they constructed. It has a haunting synth soundtrack to accompany it, and even without the plot, I'd be happy to spend the nearly three hour runtime in the atmosphere that this movie creates. If you watch my videos, you probably know I'm a huge Robin Wright fan, and her acting in this was no exception. So what you saw... didn't happen. Yes, ma'am. But I'm going to try and steer away from the more popular cyberpunk movies like The Matrix, Minority Report, Robocop and Ready Player One, as most of you probably would have seen these, but if you haven't, be sure to check them out too. Firstly, I want to talk about Netflix's Love, Death and Robots, a collection of incredible short animated films with themes based on love, death, robots, or all three. There are some really memorable episodes here. Ones that are definitely worth watching are The Witness, about a misunderstanding between a witness and a murderer, Sunny's Edge, which I definitely recommend if you're a fan of mech fighting. But what's most amazing about this show is the quality of the animation. There's some ultra real animation styles as well as some stripped back episodes, which are equally as beautiful. And the episodes range from just 5 minutes to 20 minutes, so it's really easy to watch in short bursts. However, if you're interested in delving a bit deeper into a particular story, go no further than Altered Carbon, also a Netflix original. Altered Carbon is based on Richard K. Morgan's noir novel of the same name, and is based 300 years in the future where death is no longer permanent, and human bodies are interchangeable and known as sleeves. A skilled soldier is brought back to life by a wealthy businessman named Bancroft, and Bancroft requests for the soldier to solve his murder. It's a mind-bending concept that's really well executed and acted by lead Joel Kinnaman, who I love, and the atmosphere and cinematography perfectly fits the cyberpunk aesthetic. Netflix have also released an animated spin-off of Altered Carbon named Resleeved. I'm yet to check that one out, but I've heard good things. Moving back to full-length movies now, we have 2012's Dread, directed by Pete Travis. Now first I'll just say, Dread is amazing. It's based on the 90s comic of the same name and a reboot of 1995's movie starring Sylvester Stallone. Dread is set in a post-apocalyptic world where most of Earth is a wasteland, except for concentrated areas filled with overcrowded high-rises, the double as large residential and commercial complexes. Because the crime rates are so high, police are trained as judges so that they can give sentences, life or death, on the spot. We follow a judge named Dredd and a rookie judge who is hired for her psychic abilities. You could definitely class this movie as a kind of cyberpunk diehard as we follow these cops attempting to take down a gang leader named Mama in her locked down high rise complex, whilst she's also trying to have them killed. This movie has stunning cinematography with one of the best cyberpunk city concepts I've seen in movies, from the desolate exteriors to the vibrant yet dark atmosphere of the high rises. And Dread also nails the fine line between gore and story. The violence is over the top, but not pointless, and always supports the story or helps it progress. Plus, I'm a sucker for cheesy action movie one-liners, and Dread is full of them. And as for you, Mama, judgment time.
One of the stars of Dread is Domal Gleeson, who I've recently realised is a truly underappreciated actor. His range is ridiculous. He can go from a geeky programmer to a leader of the First Order, to a romantic lead, and you can hardly tell it's the same person. Which is also a huge credit to his incredible accent and voice work. He himself is Irish, but you almost never see him use his natural accent. He also had a great episode of Black Mirror called Be Right Back, which as you probably know a lot of Black Mirror episodes concentrate on very similar themes to what we're talking about. Gleason seems to like this style of movie though, as he can also be found in 2014's Ex Machina, directed by Alex Garland, which shifts focus from violence to philosophy. I love anything produced by A24, and Ex Machina is no exception. Now I guess most people wouldn't necessarily class this as cyberpunk, but I like to think of it as a prequel to a cyberpunk reality. I'd explain my thinking on that further, but I think it'd ruin it for you if you haven't seen it. But the basic synopsis is an employee of a tech company wins a weekend away with his recluse employer to get an inside look at what he's been working on. Turns out what he's working on is an artificial intelligence named Ava who, on a side note, is expertly played by Alicia Vikander. But what I like most about this film is it concentrates on how artificial intelligence thinks, and whether an AI is truly self-aware or just emulating self-awareness. An example the movie uses is a chess computer. All the chess computer is doing is following a strategy formula. However, what would it take for the computer to actually understand that it's playing chess? The tone of Ex Machina is very David Fincher, which is always welcome, especially in movies like this with dark yet complex themes. But if you're wanting to take the aesthetic to a whole new level, then go no further than 2006's Renaissance, directed by Christian Volkman. This movie is entirely CGI and entirely monochromatic, which is a crazy art style to look at for an entire movie, but is definitely worth your time. Daniel Craig plays a cop who is known for finding anyone and is tasked to find a kidnapped scientist in a closely monitored futuristic Paris. But he soon finds that he isn't the only one searching. I do have my issues with this movie, especially the voice acting and casting. Daniel Craig was great as always, but there are some voices that absolutely do not match their character. Like this, for example. Get out of here. This can kind of distract you in some scenes, but if you're up for something different, give Renaissance a watch. On a side note, the art style of Renaissance reminded me of an anime that also came out in 2006, Ergo Proxy, which is also well worth a watch if you're a fan of the robots becoming self-aware and murdering everyone concept. And would also be a great recommendation if you can't wait for the Cyberpunk Edge Runners series. But with so much cyberpunk content to consume, what's your go-to for a technologically corrupt future? And if you've seen any of the shows or movies I've talked about, what do you think? I'd love to hear your opinions and I'll be chatting with you guys in the comments. But for more genre recommendations, be sure to hit that like button and if you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. This is Matt Rogers and that is all.